Hey there, Next Gen Hack is here. In this video, we're going to go over using the watch command to monitor the output of a program for changes. This could be really handy if you're running a program and you expect its output to change maybe 10 seconds from now, two minutes from now. You're not really sure, but you don't want to have to keep hitting the up arrow, enter, up arrow, enter. And we're going to go over a real world use case around uh, using the dig command to check for DNS updates. But here's a really quick way just to see how watch works. So, you know, you can run something like the date command here and we can see that uh, we are seeing a new output here every second, like, you know, every time basically I run that command here, but we can just run watch on date and it is going to run the date command every two seconds by default. Of course, we can change that interval, but we can see here right away that, uh, you know, the stuff that isn't changing isn't changing, but we can see that the seconds over here is changing. And there's also some nice little things that we can do here. Like we can only show the differences here. That's going to highlight uh, the areas that changed here. In this case, uh, the second interval over here, pretty cool. So that's a super quick use case of how watch works. But now let's go over a real world use case of why I even made this video here. So the other day I was modifying my DNS records and I was adding a text entry to my root domain. And uh, I just wanted to see if that text entry was available uh, for my DNS host, basically, you know, my ISP's one. And uh, you can run dig for this one. So you can say dig txt on whatever example.com. You know, I don't own example.com, just using that for the sake of the video here. But dig command, you know, you can run that on whatever you want here. You know, see name, text, A, whatever you want. And uh, we can see that we do have all different text records being listed over here. So basically, you know, in my use case, I was adding a third one and uh, I just wanted to see that third one be here. And, you know, due to the way DNS works, right, it's a distributed system. Not every DNS server is going to be updated, you know, the millisecond that you update your DNS records. It may take five minutes, it may take two hours, it may take two days. And uh, there's a couple of different tricks that you can do with DIG to check what the world might be seeing for your DNS records. So if you use at here and an IP address, this is a custom DNS server that you can use for the DNS query over here. So in this case, you know, all eights over here, this is Google's DNS server. I don't know any percentages of like how many folks use that. I mean, I don't use it personally, but I do know a number of folks who do, you know, it's a really fast DNS resolver or whatever, but you can see, you know, what Google's DNS server thinks of your DNS records. Is it up to date? And uh, there's also another one too, as well. You can do all ones, which is going to be the same thing, but for Cloudflare. So I don't know, between those two, like all eights and all ones, and then your own ISP's uh, DNS server, you know, that's a pretty decent indicator that if all three of those see your new DNS update, then, you know, I would at least bet that a decent amount of the internet can see your DNS record. You know, I wouldn't, or update or whatever, you know, I probably wouldn't do anything mission critical around that to be like, uh, you know, I'll delete a record or something when that's available. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just wanted to see if it was actually up to date or not. And then I wanted to test something to actually confirm that things are working the way I wanted to work. And, you know, all said and done, everything worked. But, you know, there's a couple of different ways I could have did this without the watch command, right? Like, one, I could have just like opened up three different terminals and just ran those three different dig commands in each terminal and then like up arrowed them, you know, every 10 seconds or whenever I get bored and felt like doing it. Maybe I could have uh, created a custom shell script, right? Make a, make a loop, maybe sleep every second, you know, run these commands here and see the output of that. And, you know, that could have been cool. And maybe I could have made some content like a YouTube video about that one. But it's like, why would I do all of that when I can just use the built-in watch command that allows me to do all of that without writing any code? So uh, here's the command that I ran. Well, let me just quit that so you can see the commands. Uh, so I just ran the same watch command that we saw before with date. This time I'm using differences instead of dash D, but it's the same thing, it's gonna highlight the changes. And uh, now I'm just running those three dig commands that we ran manually before. I'm running two of them in the background here because you know I do wanna be able to see the output of all three of those commands there. I don't wanna run them uh, like sequentially. And uh, I've done videos in the past, by the way, about running things in the background. And uh, yeah, so let's see the output of that. Now, this is going to be, I guess, a little bit hard to read because the terminal font size is so big. What we can see here in this little title bar, this is provided by watch, by the way, you know, we can see the interval, we can see the command that's being run and a little status bar here. We can actually see that, you know, every two seconds, this timestamp is going to tick up. And then we can see the highlighted differences here of what changed. Uh, I guess theoretically, what I could maybe do just for a second here, I can do my stop recording script here, uh, just to see how things are going to look normal in my monitor here. Uh, I, I don't know if you can read this, but I just want to let you know, like I can see the output of all three of these dig commands here. And as soon as I saw like the third line jump in all three of these, then I knew things are going to be good. So let me go back to uh, start recording here just so you know you can actually read the screen. But um, yeah, that's all, all I did here just to make things work. And uh, it worked out quite nicely. So that's one use case where you may want to do this, waiting for DNS changes. So 
Now let's like uh, unwind uh, the watch command a little bit more. So, you know, we ran watch date like this and we can see, okay, every two seconds and, you know, we're not getting any highlights there, cool. Uh, but we could also do the dash D that we saw before to get the highlights. So now we can see every second like uptick, we are getting uh, the little highlight there, cool. Uh, let's say we wanna make change the interval to be something else. So we can do interval one, that's gonna do every one second. Now we can see that this is popping up every one second here. And also this is also happening every one second now. Why? Because the interval is one second. And uh, you know, date doesn't give us really more information by default, but I think it can go even as far as 100 milliseconds here. Yeah, there we go. We can see it's popping up pretty quick here. Uh, yeah, and the reason I knew that is in the watch uh, man pages over here, the interval does say that uh, 100 milliseconds is the fastest that you can set there. Um, cool, nice. We'll look at the man pages, I guess, a little bit more as we go. And you know, the, the watch command on date is pretty nice just to demonstrate like how the watch command works, right? Because date is very predictable. You know, every one second by default, we're gonna get a new uh, output. So it's a great example for using the watch commands, but it's not really something you're probably going to be using the watch command for. I don't know, maybe if you wanted to have your own custom clock or I don't know, right? But another use case you may want to actually use this for is monitoring some processes on your system. Like maybe you just want to have a, I don't know, a running look at all the processes of Vim that are running in your system or something like that. And you want to be able to monitor that so that, you know, if you open up a new copy of Vim, then you can see the new one pop up or maybe you, you delete a couple and they go away. I don't know. I'm just using Vim as an example here because I know off the top of my head that I am running a lot of copies of Vim here. So how can we do that without using watch first? Well, you can run a PS, PS aux grep on whatever process that you want here, in this case, Vim, right? And we can see that, you know, I am running quite a bit, uh, a few copies of Vim here in different TMUX sessions. I've done videos about TMUX in the past before, so feel free to check those out if you'd like here. But uh, yeah, how could we further make this a little bit better with watch, right? Because I don't want to have to like keep doing the opera trick there before. So we can just run watch like we did before. However, we will need to quote this one because we are using a pipe here. You know, if we were using and and or something like that, you know, some shell scripting stuff, we would also need to use quotes here. But yeah, let's just run it like that. And we can see every two seconds, we're getting the output here. And uh, you know, if I were to open up Vim in this directory here, we're probably going to see another Vim pop up. Yep, there we go uh, over here. So yeah, nice. And then it's going to go away at some point. Yep, there it goes. Wherever it was, it went away. But uh, there's some output here that looks a little bit like, eh, we're seeing things that really aren't related to the Vim process or, you know, editor itself being opened. You know, watch is being returned here a couple of times. We can even see the, the grep Vim over here as well. So maybe we can improve this a little bit just to filter those out. So with grep, uh, you know, we could do this like 10 different ways, right? But uh, one way that I think will work pretty good here is using dash V, right? It's like the inverse. So basically you want to say like for any lines that have watch or grep in them, let's get rid of them. And for that, we can just use a very simple regular expression here where we'll do watch or the word grep here. So it's like watch or grep. And then now uh, we can run that. And then of course, we're going to get a syntax error. Why? Because uh, that's how regular expressions work. Uh, what are they for? Oh, duh, okay. So, you know, if you were to run this on the command line like this one, we would have to quote this expression here. So I think that's going to work. Yeah, done. So now we have however many copies of uh, Vim that are running here. I don't know, 10, 12, something like that. And if we open up another one, now it's gonna be a little more accurate here of, uh, we can just see one more pop up. There it goes, cool because it's 11.50, right? And it's 11.50 over here. So uh, you can see the time there, nice. Uh, but let's say for whatever reason, maybe you don't want to see that. Maybe you want to see the count. So with grep, you can just do dash C here. And now we have the count. So it was 12 copies of Vim. If they open up another one down here, it should bump up to 13 in two seconds or whenever it ticks, there it is. And then we're back down to 12 over here. Nice. Cool. So, you know, that's just another use case, maybe monitoring a process here. That's the command to do that. And by the way, all the commands that I'm running on video, I will have them in the blog post version of this video. Uh, there will be a link to that one in the description as well. So besides using uh, things like monitoring a program for changes, you can also monitor the exit code of a program a bit too. Like for example, if it exits out, you can do certain things. So for example, watch has another flag called uh, dash E like for error exit. And I don't know if you know this one, but uh, there is, a false command that always returns uh, an exit code that's not zero, basically it's failing, right? So if I do an echo here, we can see the status code of the uh, last command run was a one, like false is always going to fail. Uh, you can also do exit one, but uh, I think if I run that one, it is going to, well, it will for sure exit like this terminal session and it's gonna kill my TMX session. So I'm gonna avoid running that one, but that's another command that you can run. Um, I guess I can do something like this, I guess, and we can see that, yep. Cool, so I'm just running it in a different bash shell there. Nice, but uh, yeah, we can run watch just to get an idea of you know how things operate when something fails. So let's do watch and false. And if we do that, then we can see, you know, whatever, every two seconds it's doing its thing. Like we didn't use a dash E flag here. So, you know, uh, watch is very happily just running false, false false, whatever, every two seconds, right? But if we do dash E here, then this is going to uh, give us some new output here. We can see, 
If the command exits, exits with a non-zero status code, then it's just gonna freeze. Like we can see the timestamp up here, it stopped moving. Previously without the E flag, we saw that it did increment every interval, but now it just stopped. And this is super handy, right? Let, let's say you're going um, to run a command. You're not really sure if it's going to work. It may work, right? Uh, but now you're gonna go away for a couple of minutes, maybe like even an hour or two or something like that. And you just don't watch, you don't want watch to continue running the command. Uh, you want it to be stopped as soon as some exit happens. So we can see here, you know, this false command doesn't give us a stack trace or details about why it failed, like it literally just always fails. Uh, but, you know, if the program did fail, you would see some output here. And, uh, and, you know, now it says you can press whatever key that you want for a text it, and there you go. You can find out exactly what happened there. And um, if you want to be even a little bit more proactive, like let's say you were running something in your terminal and, you uh, you want to do something else, but you know your terminal is like minimized or off to the side somewhere. So there is another flag that you can run, which is the B flag. And I'm going to run it without the B flag first. Uh, you won't, by the way, spoiler alert, you're not going to be able to hear any sounds. But uh, in this case, you can see the title bar did not change at all when I ran that. I'll do it one more time just so you see. Uh, it's a little bit probably small for the video, but you know it just says Ubuntu there with a the little icon. But if we run the B flag over here, this is going to add a little bell icon. You can see that just popped up over here. And then, yeah, boom, it goes away. So, you know, if your terminal is configured to play sounds for the bell or whatever, and your operating system has whatever packages that you need to play a beep sound, you know, you can, you know, apt install the beep package for Ubuntu over here, then it will play the sound. However, I will mention that I am running on WSL2, and I'm not running like the graphical version of WSL2 that comes with like Windows 11 or whatever. I, I don't know, like that preview version that has all those interesting things. So long story short, I'm just saying like, I did not hear the beep sound and I kind of prefer that anyways. Like I don't even think I have my terminal configured to support that because I sort of don't like that sound. But uh, if you do prefer it and you want it and uh, you know, there could be a use case where that's reasonable, then uh, yeah, you can just add the B flag and you're good to go or dash dash beep is the same thing. Uh, also, you know, we've been playing around with this command a bit here and you know, this thing here is called the title bar. So we can see the interval and the timestamp and all that. But if we didn't want that, then I think it's dash T for no title, something like that. Uh, but yeah, that's just gonna give us the output of the program here with no title. Maybe you want that, uh, maybe you don't here. And there's some other interesting stuff you can do a uh, watch as well. So. We're not gonna go over every single flag here, but there is one more uh, that I think is worth going over, which is this change exit one. So in this case, you know, dash E that we saw before, it basically freezes uh, updates on the command and then, you know, lets you exit pressing a key here. But this one, instead of uh, on an exit code here, this one will exit when the output of a command changes. So in this case, we can do something like watch G date, and this is going to uh, immediately quit out watch as soon as that changes. So of course, that's pretty silly to do with date because of course it's going to change on every interval that we set here. But uh, you know, if you have a program where you want this to exit as soon as it changes, could be useful, I guess. Maybe let us know in the comments below. If, if you can think of a good use case, I actually can't. Uh, this is not a flag that I've used in my day-to-day. -day. I have used the error one before and you know the DNS one just watching things. But yeah, this one, I don't know. But uh, there is something you can actually do though, which is kind of neat. So if you do, let's say, I don't know, in interval five, it doesn't really matter, right? You can also keep it as two, as two but you can combine this running, uh, you can combine this when running with the time command too. So uh, what's really useful about this one is, you know, we get the timestamp of when we're in this thing and it's running, it's doing its thing. Now it's gonna go away and we can be like, oh, well, we spent a total of five seconds here before this program exited. Now, in this case, of course, this total is going to line up with this one because date is very predictable, right? It's always outputting something new something new, something new. Uh, but if your program isn't as pre predictable here, you can at least run this watch command like this one with the G flag and time. And then you can be like, oh cool, so I ran my command, it did its thing, and I got a change in output after one minute and four seconds. And we can see that total over here if that were the case there. So if you wanted to know how long it takes for your program to produce a change or whatever tool that you're monitoring, then uh, there is a way to do that, which is kind of nice. But yeah, just going back to the manual here for uh, this, uh, feel free to check this out if you'd like. You know, if you have some other flags that we haven't talked about in the video that uh, you have some experience with that could be useful, feel free to let us know in the comments. Yeah, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.